Hello and welcome to another episode of PCI's Tech TV. In today's episode we're going to take a look at UAVSAR data. UAVSAR data is a very unique data set because it is freely available and it is one of the few freely available polarimetric data sets on the market. UAVSAR data is provided by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory over at NASA and the data is readily accessible and downloadable from their site. Now what we're going to show you in today's, uh, in today's Tech TV is to show you how to download UAVSAR data and then ingest it into Geomatica Focus and Geomatica desktop software so that additional algorithms can be run in order to perform, uh, for example, decomposition as well as compute other polar metric parameters. So the first things first is that we're going to open up our web browser in order to access the JPL website. So I'm simply going to type in UAVSAR, or actually rather in Google, type in UAVSAR. And then the first page that pops up is generally the page that we're looking for. So we get redirected to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, website for the UAVSAR data. We can click on this link here, search for imagery, which is going to bring us to a dynamic web map, which allows us to visually search for the data sets that we're interested in. Now UAVSAR data is a very unique data set, and it's got a great, and it's a great uh, data set for research for academic purposes, for example, teaching, uh, providing uh, course or for courses for teaching new students, as well as for testing methodologies. As a lot of the data is um, acquired for specific events, so such as oil spill, as well as many other events, and oftentimes there's time a variety of time series images over certain event areas. So there's a lot of different applications that can be either taught to students tested in research, er, in research uh, environments, as well, and methodologies that can be tested for, uh, say, operational purposes. So I'm going to zoom in on an area here, uh, just on the coast of uh, Louisiana, which has data that was captured um, as a result of the uh, BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico back in 2010. So I'm going to look at this data, this uh, flight line right here. So if I click on this icon here, we get all the different uh, flights or uh, acquisition or data that was acquired at different dates. So you can see how it's ordered here in chronological order. So there's two specific dates that I'm going to be interested in which will allow us to go on to our next PCI Tech TV episode which is going to actually be performing some simple analysis with UAV SAR data. But as I mentioned in this episode we're simply going to be focused on acquiring the imagery and ingesting it into Geomatica. So the one that I'm going to look at today, or at, in this Tech TV episode, is the 2010 January 26th imagery, which was captured just before the oil spill, about a couple months before the oil spill actually occurred. So I'm going to click on the download link here, which is going to redirect me to another page, which is going to allow me to actually see, once again, the footprint of that um, data set, as well as it's going to allow me to have a um, overview of the image that was acquired so I can get a quick visual validation or verification of the quality of the imagery. So we have, as mentioned, you must have the annotation file, then you have a choice between the compressed Stokes matrix, which is a, dot, a single dot dat file containing all of the channels or all of the polarimetric um, bands in each in separate channels within that dot dat file, or you can download the separate polarimetric channels in individual files here as well as you have the option to download an orthorectified um, product uh, which has been resampled so it's not the best data to use for computing additional polarimetric uh, parameters and analysis as that should be done uh, prior to orthorectification but it does give you uh, another option here. So really in this, uh, in this example I'm going to be downloading the text annotation file and the Stokes matrix just for simplicity. So the first thing I do is right click on here, save link as, navigate to the area that I'm interested in, go to projects, I'm going to create a new one just called download. So I can save that and this annotation file is just a simple ASCII file so it's very quick to download. I can then do the same thing to the compressed Stokes matrix file, the .dat file. I'm going to right click on it, go to save link as, and then in the same folder I'm going to begin downloading this file. So now that the data is finished downloaded, we can simply go to the folder where we downloaded the data. In this case we already know that I pre-downloaded the data. So we can open up the data and take a quick look at it in focus prior to ingesting it. 
So open up Focus here. And I'll simply load the annotation file, drag and drop it into Focus. And as you can see, it gives us the option to load it with a, an on-the-fly uh, on um, calibration. So in this case, I'm going to load it with the Sigma calibration. I'm going to load it north up. So once it's loaded in focus, we can simply take a quick peek and a, or a quick look and examine the image. Once we're happy with the image, we can then simply go into our algorithm librarian and begin to ingest it into a working format from which we can then perform polarimetric uh, analysis and compute different polarimetric parameters on the data set. So we're going to expand the all algorithms option here. We're going to go to SAR ingest. We're going to open up this module control panel here. And the first thing we have active is the files tab. Within the files tab, we have the option to render, or, well, first of all, we have to create an output file. And then we have the option to render the output automatically on the viewer or not. In this case, let's do that. So I'm going to right click on the, uh, on the file here, click browser. I could have clicked the browse button up here. And I'm going to simply navigate to the folder where I want my output file to be saved and then provide it with a file name. So I'm going to go to Projects, Open. Create a new folder here called Ingest, just for this example. And I'll call this UAVSAR. And I'll create a .pix extension for it. I can then go to the Input Params 1 tab and simply navigate to the input file that I want to ingest. So once again, I'm going to load the annotation file. And it's automatically going to know that it's associated to the .dat file. Here, I can specify a calibration type to be applied to the file directly. So in this case, I'm going to do a sigma naught. It is important to note that if you are, use, if you are using this data for change detection purposes, it's a good idea to use the same data calibration method for all images that are going to be using or that are going to be uh, used in the change detection or change analysis. So once I have that set, I can simply click Run, and it's going to begin ingesting my data set. So now that the imagery has been added to the focus viewer, and as you can see, the execution was successful. We can close down the algorithm librarian, and we can quickly examine the ingested image. So as you can see, it's in .pix format. We have a text layer that is created for it with annotation information. We have the array segments. And we also have six different raster files that are created, three of which are the intensity values. So let's load one of these very quickly to just view it, view it as a grayscale. We can then open up our numeric values table. And you can see that we can look at the raw intensity values the enhanced intensity values, which is just what's showing up on screen based on our enhancement type. And we can also look at the complex values, which is a feature that was added in our Geomatica 2012 software. So now that it is in .pix, or our working format, we can perform additional polarimetric processes and analysis. So thank you for listening to this episode of PCI's Tech TV, and have a great day.